Welcome back. So in the last of the business, government, society models of management, we've got the stakeholder model. And the stakeholder model really kind of started coming up around 9-11. There was so much going on at that time. You had Enron that came up, you know, with the, um, you know, some accounting scandals. You had, uh, of course, 9-11, which was a horrible event uh, for any of uh, those of us that remember it, um, you know, or alive to remember it is what I mean. Um, and so people started asking questions like, well, maybe is, is this profit-centric market capitalism slash dominance model, is that really productive? Because in some way this system is starting to give. And so maybe we need to look at a manager's role as something very, very different. Okay. And that's when we came up with the stakeholder model. So a stakeholder is something that's really, really important to understand. It's all about going to a restaurant, ordering the steak you want it as you want it cooked, and then having somebody hold it for you while you eat it. That's why they call it a stakeholder. And the waiter should ask you, how would you like your steak held? And you say, I'd like it held well done or medium well or whatever. Thank you very much. No. A stakeholder is someone that has a stake, S-T-A-K-E, in an organization. A stake, i.e. an interest in that organization. Okay. So what this does is it looks at the corporation is at the center of competing interests, okay? And these competing interests are normally considered like primary stakeholders. This would include customers, owners, suppliers, competitors, and governments. Now, if you're actually doing one of these for real, you would write exactly who your customers are, who the owners are, who your suppliers are, like, you know, the U.S. government, oh, pardon me, you know, Bob the owner, you know, my customers, customers in, you know, Nashville, Tennessee, you know, suppliers, you know, Halliburton supplies this, government, the U.S. government, you know, competitors, you know, Steve's Pharmacy down the street, et cetera, et cetera, right? But these primary stakeholders are seen as individuals. Oh, and there's one more. I forgot, actually. Employees. So these primary stakeholders are individuals that have a direct and near and dear interest in the actions of the firm. And so the stakeholder model says that the corporation, and therefore your role as a manager, is to take into consideration the interests of your primary stakeholders first, right? And then the secondary stakeholders right after that. And secondary stakeholders are individuals or groups that have an indirect interest in what goes on in the corporation. So it's not nearly as close, but it could be things like communities, non-governmental organizations, a local church, a school, etc. So the impact is not as direct. But what you need to do is say that the corporation has an obligation to these primary and also these secondary stakeholders, and the decisions that we make need to at least positively impact them in some way. Now, we still have our priority as the corporation, so what our job at the corporation, at the center of this organization, is to counterbalance these different interests, right? It's counterbalancing these different interests. So it's kind of like the countervailing forces model when there's a little bit of tension. But this one just says, no, very squarely, the corporation is at the middle. Our job is to be this vector between all of these different stakeholders, and we need to give them enough value so that we get to benefit as well. Again, it's a kinder, softer market capitalism model that you might, I might say. Because, again, a corporation still has to be profit-centric. I don't think anybody's arguing on the contrary. But what we are saying is that the corporation is profit-centric, but it shouldn't be so profit-obsessed that it hurts employees, that it hurts its suppliers, it hurts its owners, um, it does things that are bad to customers, right? Yes, a corporation can be focused on making a lot of money, but you shouldn't sell poisonous food products to customers. You know, you should at least be respectful of the government and its laws. Even your competitors, you shouldn't engage in dirty or unethical behavior. Right? That's the, the crux of the stakeholder model. Yes, you got to make money, but you also have to take into consideration other people's interests. And that translates to your role as an ethical manager. Right? Yes, i got to do what's right for the corporation, but I also have to do what's right for other people. I, you know, one of the things I always say um, when I consult for healthcare companies, right? Corporation is at the middle, but I always say if you do what's right for the patient, the profit will come, i.e. the customer, right? If you take care of customers, you take care of patients and give them successful health outcomes, 
they're going to be able to come back over and over and over to you because they're alive and they're healthy enough and more importantly you've earned their trust right if you work with your suppliers and you do good things for them and you know maybe the supplier is a little bit late or something but you know you kind of give them a little bit of wiggle room hopefully they're going to be more loyal to you and they may turn away a bid from somebody else so you get to continue that relationship right you don't do bad things because if you do, then the owners are going to lose shareholder value or say, uh, stop, yeah, shareholder value, right? That will that will you know, take care of that. Yes, you want to be profit centric, but you never want to hurt your employees. Now, sometimes, unfortunately, we have difficult decisions to make, like firing and layoffs and other things. That's a different story. But you, if you can avoid it, you want to look out for their interests. You want to try to help them as well. And there's a lot of ways you can do that. We'll talk about that later. And even your competitors. Sometimes, actually, collaborating with competition is way better there's an there's a french expression that when you cut the when you cut the loaf of bread in two everybody has more there's something to be said for that so sometimes collaborating can also be a better strategy than competition but we'll talk about that a little bit later in this course again also want to consider your secondary stakeholders i hope you've enjoyed this video if you did hit the like that's a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and definitely make your comments down below i'm looking forward to seeing the next video oh and the next video series by the way there's four more videos in this playlist we're going to take not business, government, and society, but we're going to look at a manager's responsibility from a pure ethics standpoint. So taking out the business, government, and society component. I think you'll find this uh, alternative perspective in some ways similar, but also very, very different. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.